So I am feeling overwhelmingly blessed right now for this piece of equipment that was just sent to me. I've wanted one of these for a long time. And if you saw the thumbnail, you know exactly what it is. It is a Harvest Right freeze dryer. Today we're gonna talk about this blessing, we're gonna set it up, we're gonna get it going on its initial cycle and all of that. And then I am going to be doing a whole ton of freeze drying videos coming up in the near future. Let's check this thing out. Oh, wow, I cannot believe it. The company just contacted me out of the blue and said, hey, would you like one of these? And of course I said yes. So I've already been studying about how to set this up, how to do it, how to freeze dry food, and I wanna share all that with you. So we talk about a lot of different methods of food preservation here on the channel. And this was the last step. This was the missing piece. This was the one thing that I didn't have, and now it's here. I'm so thankful. So if you don't know what freeze drying is, it's also called cryodesiccation. And nobody uses that term, but it's a process of taking the water out of something at a really low temperature. So that retains its freshness, its nutritional value, almost all of its nutritional value, and its form. And it's by far the best way to preserve food because it lasts, not indefinitely, but a good 20 to 30 years. So this is the medium size freeze dryer. They have a small and a large, and this one comes with four different slots for four trays. Here's one of the trays right here. It's fairly large. I think it's nine inches wide, but maybe 20 inches long. And so that's gonna fit a decent amount of food, and there's four of them. So when you get one of these freeze dryers, it comes with a bunch of different things. Let me show you what came in the package. It's not just this unit here. If you're interested in food preservation and getting a freeze dryer for your homestead and your family, click on the link below the video. Okay, like I just showed you, it's gonna come with these stainless steel trays. These are really heavy duty. That is a thick gauge steel. So there's four of these for the medium. There is your vacuum pump oil. We've got some oxygen absorbers some Mylar bags, we've got a filter for the oil because this oil is reusable, but it needs to be clean before you use it again in the pump. So we'll talk about that later. And check this out. Look at this heat sealer it comes with. It. This thing is no joke. This thing is solid metal and it's like industrial size. It's, it's amazing. It's not just a plastic piece of junk. This is a serious piece of equipment and it's quality. And then we've got our vacuum tube and our drain hose in here. And over here, we have the business end of the whole deal, which is the vacuum pump itself. Let's take this out and show this to you. So inside the pump box, we have even more oil. So we've got extra oil, which is really cool. And this thing is hefty. It's no joke. It's a, it's a really solid piece of machinery. It's all metal and it's this is the premier pump now i know they have different pumps they have an oilless pump and i think there's a step down in pump from this one but uh, they sent the premier pump to us which thanks again that that is really really kind of you um but we're going to talk about this we're going to fill this up and we're going to get this going we're going to talk about how to set this thing up and then we are going to do what's called a bread run and i'll explain that in a minute so let's look at the pump and the proper operation of the pump. This is called a demister, but it is also the oil fill cap. So we're gonna unscrew it here at the top, and this is where we're gonna put our oil in. It's probably best to utilize some sort of funnel so we keep things nice and clean. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fill the oil in the front here, let me show you the front window, to between the min max line, so right in the middle. Now there's no oil in here right now, but it's important that we always keep the pump level, no matter what. And that means during operation, during um, filling the oil, during draining the oil, all the above. Right here at the bottom is the oil drain plug. Over here we have our vacuum hose connection. This is where this hose is going to attach to, right there, and we have our open and close uh, gas valve right here. This needs to always, always, always remain open for proper operation of the pump. 
If this gas ballast is closed, you're going to ruin the pump and you're only going to get about four or five cycles with your oil before it's ruined and the pump isn't good anymore. If this is open, which it needs to be all the time, you will get 20 to 30 cycles with your oil before you have to filter it. And so like I said, if you've got this much oil, you can get 20 or 30 cycles before you have to filter just this one. This oil right here is gonna last for an incredibly long period of time. Now, as I'm filling this up and getting it between that min and max level on the little clear window that I showed you, right after I get it to the level that I want, we have to run the pump for one minute initially. And that is so everything in the interior of the pump is coated with oil. And if I need to add oil, then I can. So I ran it for one minute and our oil level dropped a tiny bit. So I'm gonna add some in. And we used about 75% of this bottle. Once I do that, then I will show you how to hook everything else up. And then we'll start what's called the bread run. So here on the back of the freeze dryer, we've got a port for the main power plug. We're gonna plug that in like that. And then we're gonna take the cord for the vacuum pump and we're gonna plug that in right next to it. So you don't have to plug in each separately. One will operate the other. You wanna leave the vacuum pump on all the time. So just turn it on because once this shuts off, it'll shut off the power to the vacuum pump. Right above the plugs is the main power switch for the entire unit together. And up here is the inlet port for the vacuum hose. And as you can see, I've got the pump set right next to it. So that's the best position for it. I'm gonna connect this and then I'll show you the drain hose on the other side, which is crucial. And then the interior of the unit itself. So over on this side of the unit is our drain hose. We've got a barbed adapter here, which is where our clear plastic tubing will go. And this will be used to drain the unit after you defrost it after each cycle. And you can just put a big bowl or a bucket underneath during the defrosting process. But what's super important is when you are running it, this valve needs to remain closed. And if you don't do that, you're going to have a vacuum leak and the unit's not gonna operate properly. Okay, let's open it up. It's got this handle here, which kind of has two positions to close. If you're gonna close this against this big rubber seal, push it closed, lock it like that, but you have to turn it to pull the door against the big rubber seal, which is removable. Um, and that's what holds the vacuum in the front here. Okay, the seal is actually made to come off because you'll probably need to replace it in the future at some point. It's thick and heavy duty, so I don't think it's that often. But it does come off so you can also take these trays out or this interior piece right here and clean it. Now this tray has heating mats on the top and that's where you see this connection happen right here. All those need to remain up. So you're gonna slide your trays in on the bare steel here and not flipped over on the heating mats themselves. The mats stay above the food. And then of course you'll just slip in each tray. Fits perfect and they say not to have your food above the lip, so about a half inch deep of, of food. So if you're cutting meats or anything like that, you want them a half inch thick so they sit flush with the top of the trays. Okay, it's bread run time. What is that? Well, it's the very first cycle you run through your machine. If you smell it, it smells brand new. It's got manufacturing smell to it. It's got plasticky smells and rubbery smells and all of that in it. And you don't want that in your initial batch. So running some cheap bread through here with some vinegar water sprayed on it will take out all of those odors. And as soon as that initial cycle is done, we can start using this for whatever we want. With the exception of just a few high fat foods, and we'll talk about that in future videos. So let's get our bread with our vinegar water in there. We're gonna run it for a 24 hour cycle. We'll come back tomorrow and show you exactly what that bread looks like. So this is our main touch operation screen up here. We are gonna flip on the unit. Everything should start up and we are going to do what's called a function test here. We're gonna push this little circle logo here first and this will get you to the function test. 
Now to test it initially, we are going to toggle the freeze to on. You should hear the compressor kick on, and we're going to let that freeze for 30 minutes. If it's not working properly, then you're going to know it after this initial function test. So after that initial 30 minute freeze, you're going to toggle on the vacuum. Your vacuum pump will kick on and you want it to go below 500 mTOR. I don't know what mTOR stands for. It's the pressure level in there. And if it doesn't get there, then you need to check your hoses, you need to check uh, the valves to make sure everything in, and the door to make sure everything's closed properly. If it does like ours, you pass the test and now you can do your initial freeze dry on that bread. Okay, you're doing this along with me. So we're gonna press start. We're gonna select Premier Oil Pump. Save it. We are going to hit continue. So it's telling us it's freezing now and after the freezing will be the drying. And we'll be back to show you that bread tomorrow or just a second for you. And we're back and our bread is done. It's completely dry. There is zero moisture in this and it took about seven hours. And that's because the bread was fairly dry to begin with. Obviously, if you put soup in here, it's gonna take much, much longer. Let's show you what this bread looks and sounds like. So when the bread was completed, even though I'm gonna throw out the bread because it was just the experiment with the vinegar on it, I wanted to show you, I put it in here with a oxygen absorber. And you're gonna to wanna to do that. You're gonna to wanna to put it in a Mylar bag all of the stuff that you dry freeze and seal it. But we'll do that in the future for you. I did leave some out here and it's still incredibly dry. It hasn't absorbed any moisture, but listen to that. There's a little ASMR for you. It's like styrofoam. It's very light and it is 100% dry. You can see it kept its, its form, but this is absolutely fascinating. This is a great addition to any homestead and preserving your food for a really long period of time. And we are gonna be doing more videos on this in the future, including how much energy does it use and can it run off of a solar system? If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments section below. Now go check out this video right here, which shows you how to can pears. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.